Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel for another episode of 3D Interference. Uh, today, what I wanna talk about is ancestral healing. Um, ancestral healing actually kind of is a wide range topic and it's not really included in the 3D Interference section of my book, my new book, Star Seeds and the Great Awakening. Um, it's included in the kind of the, uh, where we're headed um, and what we're doing about the 3D Interference and how we're healing. But I wanna tie it in today um, with the 3D interference because uh, there's a lot of components to it and it is quite complicated. So I'm going to try to simplify it. Um, and the over the overarching um, kind of theme of ancestral healing, it ties into the latest video that I did, that I did called epigenetics and junk DNA. And this is kind of the, uh, a part two even to that um, where, you know, we as a collective over many thousands of years, have been um, placed in this uh, 3D grid system that has um, maintained itself through 3D, 3D interference and the disconnection of people um, and their sovereignty and their ability to recognize um, their independence from that system, from that grid, uh, through this this kind of this programming of uh, of um, kind of the sheeple mentality that we have um, adopted or many of us refer to it as that simply meaning the enslavement of, of humanity through manipulation, through power structures, through division, through all sorts of things. And that is reinforced through the 3D interference. And remember, you know, a lot of the things that I talk about in the book are only a small fraction of the whole. So I only talk about the interference that I personally have experienced with through my sessions um, that, that have come through uh, as channeled messages or, or things like that with the clients that I work with, uh, or I have received my own downloads, um, you know, over the past five to, to really to 10 years for a lot of this stuff. Um, but there's so much more to the 3D interference uh, than I even talk about. Uh, but I only included in this book, the things that I felt comfortable sharing, because I know um, more in depth kind of uh, information about it based on um, what I have compiled through session notes and, and with clients um, throughout the years. Uh, so ancestral healing has come up a lot in my sessions, I would say more so in the past year. And I studied ancestral healing. I studied shamanic healing and, and various shamanic modalities um, probably close to 10 years ago, um, where I learned about cord cutting and shamanic practices uh, use, using earth or, or tapping into earth elements um, to heal and, and so many other beautiful um, soul retrieval um, methods, etc. cetera. Um, and I think I was being primed for this this uh, notion of ancestral healing for quite some time. So I spoke about in the epigenetics video about how our genetics over hundreds, um, thousands of years hasn't really changed that much because I believe that we as part of this uh, 3D grid have been, um, have placed under certain, uh, you know, the double helix um, where we are uh, deactivated in a lot of our uh, abilities to heal and to tap into our knowing and our and our psychic ability um, and our astral ability and, and, and the mind, body, spirit connection, essentially. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting because if you look at like a reptile, for example, um, they are able to regrow their limbs when um, they are, uh, when there's some sort of trauma, um, you know, I, unfortunately my cat attacks lizards in my, on, on my patio. I try to stop it, but when I'm around, not around, I, he, he gets to them really easily. And he'll, um, a lot of times the tail will break off. And if he's not able to catch them, I'll see them tailless running around. And then ultimately the tail will grow back or, you know, if, if they have some sort of trauma and they, and they lose a limb, um, same thing, it grows back. I know that our DNA, the human DNA has the ability uh, to grow back vital limbs and even organs um, if they're damaged. But we part of the deactivation of our DNA, um, possibly included in that junk DNA, like I spoke about, um, we do have the ability to to grow back vital limbs for survival. Uh, we just it's not activated. I believe that through genetic modification and, and various other nefarious practices over the years from the powers that were that were controlling the 3D matrix um, and this control system. Um, have technology and they've done a lot of manipulation of the gene 
gene codes in order to deactivate a lot of those abilities. So in order for us to maintain um, our vibration in this low uh, control grid under hypnosis, under mind control and all these other things, there are a lot of angles that they come at us in order to keep us kind of like puppets attached to these strings where they can determine um, the movements we make um, where we think we have free will. And I talked about this in several conferences and I brought it up in my book, you know, where this convoluted I idea of free will, where in reality we have free will um, as a conscious, as conscious beings, our own fractals of light, we do have free will. That's the universal law where each conscious being has the uh, ability to go and live different lifetimes and make certain choices with minimal um, interruption or, you know, uh, what's the word where, where inter, um, minimal, uh, my brain, uh, where they, they don't allow it, whatever that word is, um, and, and intervention and, um, but in the 3d grid, a lot of those rules aren't followed or, or they're not allowed. Um, that the free, free will is limited and we don't realize that. So many of us walk around saying we have free will and yes, we do to some extent, but what we don't realize is our free will is capped, much like a ladder gets to a certain level where we don't realize um, that we are kind of um, led down certain paths or, or up certain ladders, metaphorically speaking, of free will, where we think that we're making these choices when in reality we're being influenced in many different directions. So do we have free will or is it convoluted in many different ways? I believe, yes, we do, but it's also convoluted. So it's it, there's more than one answer to that. So um, as our ancestry, whether it's soul ancestry, meaning, um, you know, the soul of Sherry, how many lifetimes has she had and how has that influenced the collective of the oversoul group that I'm within, as well as just the collective, um, you know, consciousness of, of, of the human species, but also um, hybrid species and many others that I have probably been over millions of years, just like everyone else. So we're ultimately connected at a ma macro level, but in a micro level, you know, um, how has that been affected within my small group? And then you have the mankind, this human, um, this humankind uh, species uh, lineage where, you know, there's generations of people within the same um you know, uh, ancestral lineage. So the ancestral healing is twofold. It's it's healing the ancestral lines um, of of your of generations of trauma programming, like I talked about in in the epigenetics video. So this is, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you watch that first because um, I think it's a good uh, starter to for it got things kind of set up for this video. Otherwise things might not make sense or they might seem like I'm skipping over things. But I already talked about it in that video. I I, I just did. So ancestral healing is quite profound because what in fact what's happening is not only are we healing at a soul level um, where our soul has the ability to call in fragments and fractals of itself uh, through trauma um, that we've experienced in lifetimes, but also um, so we're healing on a soul level, but we're also healing the lineage of what connects us um, and ties us to the certain lineages that we have had or been um, attached to in our lifetimes. So for example, um, the ancestral lineage of Native American tribes, specifically, um, or what name a tribe, or the Aboriginals, you know, maybe the Australian Aboriginals, or, you know, they're all over the world, the, these different tribes, so these ancestral um, lineage, uh, or, or, or maybe even just Italian, um, being French, um, et cetera, you get the idea. So who you've been tied to genetically um, in this 3D reality, so there's healing taking place there as well. And the re the way I learned about ancestral healing um, on another level, aside from the shamanic healing that I that I uh, learned years ago, through my sessions, I started seeing that the star seeds, specifically more so the 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 latest generation. So I'm talking the the indigos that are my age, you know, and up until fifties, uh, and then the ones that are, that ha are still coming in and have been coming in, um, since, uh, since like this, well, really predominantly the seventies and the eighties and the nineties. Um, but, but there's always a variation a little bit before and a little bit, um, after, so it could be the fifties and sixties, and then it could be the early two thousand two thousand. But that this group of star seeds, um, started coming in with the soul journey of, of, not only shifting and 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 um, 
balancing the energy of of the of the planetary grid through their their frequency, but also uh, shifting the energy of their soul lineage within this particular timeline, um, ancestral lineage which, uh, in this particular timeline to help heal their family. So to help heal their parents' wounds and traumas that have potentially already crossed over or maybe are still here and they're helping them before they cross over. And then the grandparents and the great grandparents and so on. So many of the indigos right now, um, I wouldn't say didn't succeed because we are still working on that, but we kind of opened the doorway to the healing of our lineage, um, which is why many star seeds that have are within that category have taken on really challenging lives where you've struggled a lot. Maybe you have been around a lot of um, mental illness in the family or, or chronic illness or a lot of variables where you think, gosh, I chose a hard life, but really you chose a, a whopper of a life because you are here to shift the trajectory of that intent and uh, of the future of that lineage, but also to heal the lineage. Um, you know, even all the way until its existence, which I talk about in the book, you can heal you can heal the lineage all the way until it started. So it's profound level of healing and the children that are coming in that are now teens and early 20s and then that are in their preteens and then those that are still coming in and everything in between are our next level, next wave of ancestral healers. So they are help, they are coming in and they're healing their soul from traumas of other lifetimes, but they're also helping the collective heal and they're also helping the ancestral lineage. So this is profound. This is multidimensional, multi-layered, multifaceted. It's not just one area. It's how can we heal the collective at whole? And what are the what are the counterparts in the in the different micro variables for all of that and how that works and the intricacies. And I think our human brains um, don't really have the capacity to understand all the elements in the way that we do in a high, from a higher perspective. So that's another thing. As our, as we activate our junk DNA, which is just the deactivated um, sequence DNA sequences that connect to our spiritual blueprint and the multi-dimensionality that we are, um, and always have been, but we didn't have access to it. Um, our uh, the our ability. Uh, to perceive information that filters through the brain. And that's why some people um, are uh, have a lot have more trouble than others to understand or understand certain information, whether it's math, sciences, or really technical information or uh, the, et cetera. Uh, because the information from the higher self has to channel through the filter of the of the brain, but also the perception that you are based on the vibration that you're in, which is also influenced on a daily basis. And with all of that information um, and that ability, we are able to ascertain or understand or understand uh, the information differently than than the person even next to us. So as our our deactivated DNA becomes more active and we're able to bring in more light and we're in a higher vibration, our ability to channel or know um, information like these instant downloads are not really coming from the brain. They're just coming for by almost bypassing the primal aspect of ourselves. And we're going directly to the higher aspect and just getting a lot more information and therefore we'll understand a lot more. But as it stands and how it's been for quite some time, many of us struggle because of the 3D interference that blocks our ability to, um, to have clear perception that we are limited in our ability to really grasp and understand the full picture. And that's why it's nice when you collaborate because some one person might have part of the picture and, and someone has another and someone has another. And when you collaborate and you combine your knowings, then you might, you'll have a much bigger picture. But when you're only focused on what you have, um, it's really hard to do that because we don't all have every angle. Um, and that's changing. So ancestral healing is huge. It's 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 bigger than this one video that I'm doing, and it's harder to it's hard to explain, and I'm not going to explain it all in one sitting because it's quite expansive. Um, but I want to try to let everyone um, know what I've learned about it and how, how I, and why I think it's so important. And through these sessions that I've had, I have been told repeatedly now, but in the beginning, I'm going to admit, I didn't quite understand it fully. Didn't know if I really believed it or resonated with it more so because I don't think in my perception, I was, you know, I was even able to process it the way I, I am able to now 
Um, and I think that's also changed because I'm having more sessions with people and hearing it more. And what I'm trying to get to is that we are, we have these dominant timelines and then we have the kind of the recessive timelines. So dominant timelines are big timelines in, in the history of the consciousness. And, and let's just stick to earth right now. Uh, but it but it ripples out to the cosmos and, and other other planetary systems, et cetera. But it's just speaking on earth right now. And the 3Ds, this is limited very much to the to Earth and this 3D grid that we're within and, and the thousands of years, thousands and th thousands, and even millions of years that we have been within this grid. But we'll focus on, you know, thousands and thousands and not millions and millions. I know that probably just confused you more, but there are dominate dominant timelines during that that the, those eras. So let's talk about Lemuria. Lemuria is a dominant timeline where there was um, there there was very much peace on Earth, uh, much higher density beings, collaboration, just beautiful harmony and resonance not only with the people to, that interacted with one another, but the uh, earth itself and the beings on the planet all were able to kind of resonate in harmony with with one another and there was uh, there's this cohesive or this unity among them um and then there are dominating timelines in atlantis uh there are dominating timelines all throughout our history uh with with with, with regard to yeshua and the biblical era um and the roman empire i mean there's so many dominating timelines but there are also because there's no time and space outside of this reality there there are an infinite amount of timelines um, in, in our past and all these decisions that we make and, you know, what our what we do as a collective, but also individually and the choices we make shift the trajectory and create these spinoff timelines, um, which will, I believe, sometimes don't even have a physicality behind it. I think that it's more energetic um, and until the energy uh, um, dies down and there's nothing left to feed that timeline, it will just dissolve that's even more complicated and hard to a little bit more convoluted to explain so um I'll, i won't get too far into that but but what i've learned in my sessions is that there are timeline many timelines where the apocalypse occurred or where there we are completely enslaved um by the play the dark players who whom have done whatever they could to suppress us through domination in, in every way possible. So a lot of the things that we are seeing um, and the plans that they have have already su have succeeded um, in other timelines. The problem is those timelines are very recessive. They don't have a lot of power behind them. They've lost their power. They're not getting the energy to fuel those timelines. And so they're dissolving. But there are people that are tapping in to those timelines that are that are very real to them that are living it in this exact moment that are recalling it and or they're it are, they're coming through as mental illness and and um traumas in this life that have nothing to do with their current life and if they don't have an awareness or an understanding about it they have no idea so that's a lot of where a lot of where mental illness comes from it's a misunderstanding of the of of people tapping into other realities um that are not in the present moment and it's confusing to them and they don't know what reality they're in or there are bleed through realities from other dimensions um and they uh essentially go nutty because they that no one believes them so they're not really nutty but no one believes them so they uh kind of um submit to uh this this knowing or belief that maybe they are crazy or they just give up and say you know they know they're not crazy but they can't convince anybody otherwise so they just you know, there's not much they can do. And unfortunately, many of them end up in facilities and, and they're medicated. And once medicated, then they have the ability to be taken over by NPC uh, programming, et cetera, where they just kind of lose lose their essence, lose their life spark. So mental illness is a whole other topic. And I might do another video on that, but it's also in the book itself. So we have these dominant timelines and we have these recessive timelines. And I know that a lot of these recessive timelines are dissolving. And I think uh, what why is because these dominant timelines, the collectives are waking up, they're, um, they're asserting their dominant, their, not their dominance, their empowerment. They are becoming more liberated. We're standing up and we're unifying. And, and the, the key here is we are unifying. We, we, we are recalling our higher knowing that competition is not resolution. It causes conflict um, at the root of it. Healthy competition is different. I'm not saying people can't compete and play a game of soccer and have a winning side. No, but 
everyone knows that what I think most people know what I'm talking about, about the heavy themed competition in this reality to create division. I've talked about it for years and years. So as we become more aware, we become more unified. And as we become more unified, our light bright, like I talked about that this grid, the light grid expands and brightens, which breaks down the 3D grid, their, their dark grid system. And we're healing as in this timeline and other timelines, as it becomes even more dominant and more bright, we can dissolve the, the lesser timelines, uh, but we can also heal those fractals. So the fractal of uh, our, so, uh, ourself. So if I was in another timeline that I was enslaved and, and I'm in one of these recessive timelines where I'm completely controlled, uh, that, that's a fractal of my soul that has been, that's been taken into this other timeline. And um, I, I'm either feeding into it or or not. It just depends on what's going on in my life. Um, but as I stand up and empower, and I'm empowered in this life, and as I go through healing and I, and I um, raise in consciousness, then I can recall that soul fragment of myself back, which is a, a method of soul retrieval. Many of us are doing this right now without even realizing it. So it's not like you got to go buy a book or go learn shamanic soul retrieval. I believe in what I've been told repeatedly is, Sherry, everyone can do this. It's all in a, our belief our, and knowing is half the battle and saying, I don't even know if I'm in these other timelines, but if I am, I recall, I do not consent. And you call those soul fractals back to you and you focus and, and do everything you can to illuminate this timeline, this life, your sovereignty by, by working on yourself and being of service and, and connecting as strong as possible. Cause the more strong you are in this timeline, then it will nullify the other one. So you don't need necessarily somebody to pay, to pay someone to help you with it. You can do it all on your own. It's just knowing is half the battle. So as we, um, as we heal ourselves and we re realize we have the ability to do that, we also call on the fractals of ourself. We dissolve these other timelines and it's happening every moment of every second of every day i know it and the and then when that when that happens the collective stronger grid and timelines become um illuminated and they're stronger so we are at it, in reality or in essence we are positively affecting other timelines and other eras even so I have many clients that are from the, um, well, from all over periods of Atlantis, but but specifically um, to the end, kind of the end days of Atlantis, the fall of Atlantis, where technology was, well, manipulation was introduced by by dark players that came through and um, enticed um, vul vulnerable beings into doing trades. And then we all know how that worked out for them. Um, and many people died, many people suffered. As a result of that, I think the energy grid became stronger. So in these timelines where destruction does occur, the grid, the 3D grid only has become stronger over time. But now we're combating that and we're able to break it down. And, and we are able to, in the now moment, in this dominating timeline, we can heal the timeline even in other dominant timelines as well. So I hope I'm not confusing you guys. I'm trying my best to explain this easily and, and, and in a way that makes sense. What we're doing right now as a collective is directly affecting all the timelines, the dominant ones and the recessive ones, and we can make a huge difference. So I believe everybody who signed up to be in this life right now in this timeline, this dominant timeline of, of the ascension, chose again a whopper of a life um, to be to be a, in assistance to break down and transmute. There are warrior spirits. There are those that are stabilizers. There are those that are strictly like little Tesla tower conduits of energy, just beacons of of energetic light. Many of which are children, but there are adults as well um, that may even be in a remote island somewhere and never had interaction with any other human being. And that's okay because their job is to stabilize and balance and harmonize the, the earth grid that they're near or portals that they might be near or underground or, 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 or earth, mother earth herself, or communicate with um, inner earth. And then there are those in big cities that are, are, be or beacons of light to stabilize the EMF um, technology and the voice of God technology and the interference and they're around a lot of people and just everything in between. So everybody's playing their role. Everyone that is in this life is has signed on to be here to um, directly affect and heal not only the lineage you're attached to, so who you chose as mom and dad or what family you're in, and um, but also on a soul level and then a collective level. Uh, so we are kind of 
transmuting the trauma and everything negative um, from our point in, in in the past, which is the past of the 3D past, not there's no past in 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 outside of this time matrix. But we are in it now, and that's the point. We are breaking down and we are healing and we are transmuting so we can pave the way for these new earth children to come through, which are just evolved beings that are coming in as children, because they that's how our our bodies work. We have to we start as children and we grow. Um, but they're evolved beings, many of which are more evolved and more ascended than any of us have ever seen. And and um they will grow to to truly express that and be the the future leaders of of this planet and then they'll bring in more and more and more um as the as the light bodies and the density shift then they can bring even more high density bodies and beings and it will shift even more and more and more and then we anchor into um this this light grid that we create after the 3d grid is dissolved and then where we go from there is just there's infinite possibilities but we're anchored in and protected which is why the quantum military is so important because they come in and reinforce it and continue to make sure that we're protected and we're anchored in that so that another grid system isn't developed or not hijacked etc i've talked about that a lot the quantum military is in the book and i've done a lot of interviews so i don't think i'm going to do a separate video on that because i've talked extensively on a couple of videos uh journey to truth i talked about it a lot i've talked about it on michael jaco's show and a couple others so i, I won't probably won't do a separate one or maybe I will later on as I get more information um that's new then I'll then I'll do more and more videos in the future on that but for right now the ancestral healing is so profound because we are healing our parents our grandparents um and and generations and generations before we are also healing timelines we are healing the future uh, generations coming through by clearing the pathway and the beautiful thing about that that is as we do that we dissolve transmute deactivate all the negative imprints that we take on like i talked about in epigenetics from our ancestors in this lineage of illness phobias fears programming um and those codes are deactivating and the cellular memory of of illness is deactivating um, all of it is happening in this now. So whether you are uh, a young child or you are even elderly, I mean, I don't want to exclude those in the 70s, 80s, 90s, because you are all part of it too. I think that you laid the foundation so that the indigos could come through, um, kind of like Dolores Cannon's first wave come, um, but they, you know, you, they struggled the most because they really were uh, embedded in a period that wasn't ready. And there was so much corruption and manipulation that nobody was ready to hear. Humanity as a, as a whole wasn't ready to hear um, or transmute or change or shift yet. So, you know, again, I, I, I said in the book and I've said in other videos, you didn't fail. Uh, you just set the foundation, you planted the seeds. Uh, and, and that's more than we could have ever asked for because then it allowed the indigos the next generations to come through and open it up a little bit more and plant plant more seeds uh and every every 10 to 15 years new generations come through and they plant even more seeds and more seeds uh, so i never look at it as a failure it's even if you planted one seed and then that's it that was profound because now in hindsight, looking back, the garden is flourishing. It's absolutely magnificent and beautiful. And that is contributing uh, to the collective awakening process where we are now so that the children can come through. Because uh, as I understand it more and more, these children would never have come through and will, wouldn't continue to come through right now um, had we not reached a certain point where, or the point of no return or the point in which uh, we have evolved past a certain point where they know that they can't become trapped here because these advanced souls don't want to, you know, descend into this reality into a lower density and become trapped here. And that's why we have such a high population of labeled autistic because I don't want to call them that, but that's really what it is. They, the, the, the less functioning aut um, autists, uh, they don't come in fully in their body because they don't want to get trapped here. Even though they know where we are, they still don't want to be in this toxic environment because I, I've been told by many children in sessions, this, this reality is actually toxic and you don't realize it until you're out of it. And then you come back in the food, the air, the density, just, the, just being in it or being in these, these bodies, these flesh and bone, how as magnificent as our bodies are and how intuitive they are and their abilities and capabilities, 
in the 3D, they're really, they're limited so much. We don't realize it till we go out. So the colors are so much more vibrant. Our bodies have so much, so much more abilities. And there's so many things outside of the 3D, but when you're in it, you don't realize it. And they don't want to become trapped in it. And they also don't want, they just don't want to be in it. It's like, I don't want, I don't want to fully um, experience that. I've been there, done that. So they come in just enough so that their avatars can work uh, and they can, and they are anchored in enough and they, but they are not fully present. Um, and they are teaching their caregivers, their families, and those around them telepathy and, and communicating on a more profound level um, through energy and, and quantum as opposed to through verbal because they don't want to speak our language and our word spells, et cetera, which I also talk about in the book. I've talked about many times before. So where do we go from here? What does this all mean? It means that if you're watching this, if you're guided to watch this, you likely are participating in ancestral healing, whether it's lineage, it's human, you know, um, humankind um, healing, liberation, sovereignty, and or soul level healing and the, you know, mass collective healing. And it's and all and everything in between. I believe it's not just one category. We're doing all of those things. Um, so that's why we need uh, individually, everyone, um, I encourage you to focus on going within and trusting yourself, getting to know yourself, fall in love with yourself, uh, enjoy being by yourself uh, take time away from everybody. Even as much as I love my family, my children are my whole world. I love myself and, and spending time with myself. I like to just be alone. I want to be left alone, um, sometimes longer than I should, but then there are others that I am filled up energetically with that. I ground, I center, I, I recognize that the thoughts that are, are just mine in those moments. And I'm not, I'm not absorbing my children's emotions or the environment's emotions and neighbors, friends, et cetera, or my, or my husband's. Um, I, when I'm spending time alone, I can reflect and then I really can discern what's mine and what's not, work through it. And, and those, it's those moments of, of self-reflection and being alone where the, where the most profound healing takes place. And if all of us do that and we disconnect from the noise and the, three, the 3D interference doesn't work, none of it. None of the none of the EMFs, none of the mirror technology and ET interference, black box and voice of God, um, the food poisoning, the air poisoning, the et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the vaccines, none of that will work or none of it, I guess work isn't the right word. It doesn't really work, I guess, um, if we are so strong in our foundation that it's it's just it, it will just knock us off a little bit, but we get back up. Um, but many of us are knocked down that we we just feel like we can't get back up because there's so many things being thrown at us. Um, but in reality, it's just, we have to shift our mindset and to do that in order to do that, we really have to go within, we have to disconnect um, from all of the, the noise and the, to turn off the TVs, don't watch the news, be careful what movies and, and you watch, um, that everything that's coming out is so obvious to me the programming and the levels of programming. I can't watch one show now without saying, yep, oh, that's what they're trying to do. That's that agenda that they're pushing. And it's almost a hundred percent. It's very far and few between that. I'm able to even find a show now that, that isn't pushing some sort of agenda. Um, so just be careful what you watch and it's okay to watch. Like, even though I watch it, I'm not being programmed from it because I know I recognize that there's some element of programming and I don't consent to it. So sometimes I do it just to know like what are, what are they saying or I want to see what my kids are watching, et cetera. So turn that off if you can. Take breaks from it. Go outside in nature. I mean, I've said all these things a million times. I know I sound like a broken record, but take control, um, breathe, let go, forgive, um, you know, whatever you can do to focus on um, empowering yourself. And then, you know, when you're feeling more sound and more stable then you can turn around and really guide those that are ready which is key uh trying to guide people who aren't ready and give you resistance can only actually block you and, and keep your your vibration down so um create energetic boundaries over around those that aren't ready we don't want to judge them but we also don't want them to pull us down into their vibration so we say i wish you the best i said love and light I'm putting boundaries. I have to separate myself. Even I'm talking, even if it's your husband or your spouse and you can't get out of the house, you still create can create 
energetic boundaries, you still can limit the conversations that you have and kind of have neutral territory of what you're able to talk to about and what you're not. Um, and so it, there, there's multi, it's multifaceted, but ultimately ancestral healing is, is very profound. It's part of the ascension. It's part of our evolution right now. And I think just being mindful of everything that I've said and the epigenetics, um, and how we can directly influence everything in a positive way, it's much more conducive in my mind to focus on that as opposed to all the things that are out of our control, all the things that are negative, that we, if we focus our energy on all of that and all the lies and all the dark player moves that they're doing to prevent us from ascending, and we let them win every time we focus our attention on it. So don't focus your attention on it, just focus on the positive stuff. Um, and those things that they do will no longer work or they won't have the power to do them anymore. Um, so it takes a collective effort. That's why everybody counts. Everybody's mind counts because our um, we have su we don't realize the influence of our thoughts. Words have power, but also the thought that our thoughts have power and our beliefs. And they we put a projection out energetically and that can influence the rest of us in the collective based on your very pessimistic thoughts or your dark thoughts or your worry and fear. We all have fear. We all have worry, but you instantly recognize it. And you say, I no longer hold on to this fear and worry anymore. It no, it's no longer serving my highest good. And then you do a series of breaths. You exhale and you visualize yourself letting it go and say, I've, I, I cannot control it. I am not going to resonate with that at this time. And you let it go. And then you focus on what you can control, your positive thinking, your co-creation of what you want the world to be. And you focus your energy on that and you visualize and you put that intention out and we can make big changes and we can, we can not only heal our lineage um, and pave the way for our children and the future generations, we can, we can heal at a soul level. So we call in the fractal elements of ourself back. So we are more whole. And then we can also heal our soul families. And again, the collective, which we're all, we're all soul families um, and heal us on a macro level. So the micro all the way to the macro. So I hope this video was helpful for you today. Hopefully it was clear and concise uh, as best of my ability. I try um, leave your leave comments. Let me know if it makes sense to you. There's so much more to it than that. But again, I'm trying to do these kind of these bite-sized videos where people can watch a little bit at a time and digest it before we go into different topics. So um, I try not to speak too much about things in an exhaustive way. Um, so that's all for today. Um, I wish everyone well. Um, until next time. Bye, everybody.